Okay, we're going to charge this capacitor up and then discharge it. As it's connected right now, it's going to start charging. And the negative charge will build up on this plate and the positive on this one. And we can use Q equals CV to figure out the initial charge stored in it. That's going to be 6 volts times 100 microfarads, which will give us 0 0.6 millicoulombs charge stored on it. Okay, when I want to discharge it, I'll connect it to point B like this, and it'll start discharging. At the start, because the electrons are repelling each other, they'll flood off this pl uh, plate and move on to this plate like this. The current at the beginning will be very quick because the electrons are repelling each other and they're being attracted to the other side. Um, and we can and the voltage obviously this was charged up to six volts when it's fully charged and the voltage across those all will be also be six volts. You can think of the capacitor as the source of EMF now. So before it was a cell when it was connected, but now there's the cell is no longer in the circuit. Um, it's the capacitor is acting as a source of EMF. So we can work out the current at the beginning using uh, I equals V of R. Um, and of course, um, the V is 6 volts at the beginning, and then 100 ohms, that gives us 0 0.06 amps at the beginning. This will decrease as the voltage across it decreases. So the voltage will become 3 volts eventually. And this will, so will this one. And then it will decrease again until it's 0 completely discharged all the charge has flowed off it. Here's what the graphs will look like. You can see the old exponential decrease. Um, at the beginning the current is really large and the voltage uh, across the capacitor is 6 and then decreases. And here are the following equations. Okay, Again Q and V and I are the um, charge, voltage and current at, at that partic a particular point in time, current at time t. And V naught and I naught and Q naught, they're all at the, the maximum. This capacitor was charged completely by connecting the switch to point A, and then you start to discharge it by connecting it to point B. We want to figure out how long it takes for 80% of the charge in the capacitor to discharge. So that means only 20% will be remaining. So you would be very careful with the wording here. So in the equation Q equals Q naught ether minus T over RC. We want this to be 20% and this to be 100%. So let's quickly work out RC. So it's 100 microfarads times 100 ohms, which gives us 0 0.01 seconds. So we can use this equation 0 0.21 times e to the power of minus t over 0 0.01. Rearranging this, we'll have the ln 0 0.2 equals minus t over 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then which gives us a time of 0 0.016 seconds. Okay, In the second part of the question, you've added two bobs and series, each with 100 ohms, so basically, you've increased the resistance to 300 ohms. So we, the initial discharging current, I mean, it's still the capacitor has still been charged to 6 volts. It's got the same amount of charge because the charging process hasn't changed. It's the discharging process was just changing. So you can work out the initial discharge current using I equals V of R. So the initial discharging current will be somewhere over here. And also it will be discharging more slowly. So it will still be an exponential decrease like that. Okay, so another key thing to keep in mind is that the charge uh, is equal to current times time. So the area under this graph is actually the charge, the, com or the total charge stored which is still the same because the charging process is, hasn't changed. So the area under both graphs should equal be, be equal.